Hello, 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 hello. I welcome you once again to Supply Chain Management Lecture with Dr. Ifeyima Mary Ann Okafo. I know you had wonderful time with Dr. Iya Ezebasi, who handled the fourth six modules of this Supply Chain Lecture. The YouTube handle is placed by the side of this today's section. Feel free to click on it and watch more if you have not gotten enough of it. Today, we are going to be discussing assessing medical laboratory health logistics system. We're going to be discussing assessing medical health laboratory logistics system. And the section objectives are, you're expected to know how to describe the purpose of conducting health logistics system. At the end of this lecture, explain steps in planning and conducting logistic system assessment, identify and select indicators to measure logistic system performance, describe the logistic indicators assessment and other tools that can be used to assess logistic system, explain the elements of good recommendation, Describe the role of logistic manager in the assessment and improvement of logistic system. And of course, explain the characteristics of an implementation strategy. What is logistic system? By definition, logistic system is the total flow of products from the acquisition of raw materials to the delivery of finished goods to the users. And this includes the relative flow of information that controls and records the movement of those products. The total flow of products from the acquisition of raw materials to the delivery of finished goods to the users, including the relative flow of information that controls and records the movement of those products. That is the logistic system. Now, what is the purpose of conducting logistic assessment? Why do we need to conduct logistic assessment? Why do we need to assess the performance of logistic system? We did that because we want to know, we want to assess the entire system strengths and weaknesses, present this result of the assessment to the managers and policy makers. We want to present our recommendation for eliminating weaknesses and also propose an implementation plan based on the recommendations. and also propose an implementation plan based on the recommendations, okay? Now, for that, the reasons why we conduct logistic assessment, the reasons for conducting logistic assessment. We conduct logistic assessment because we want to determine whether the community needs of a new program can be made reliable. If you want to start a new program, for example, HIV program, malaria program in a new area, we want to know whether the commodity, commodity needs of a, that new program can be made reliable. We also want to know, you know, we want to identify logistic problems related to the product category and also track logistic performance over the course of the program. And also we want to improve supply chain performance and ultimately customer care. Those are the key reasons why we uh, conduct logistic system assessment. The key reasons why we conduct a logistic system assessment, we want to determine whether the commodity needs of a new program can be made uh, reliable. Now, before we conduct logistic assessment, there are steps that we need to take. And what are these steps? You know, the first thing that we need to do when we want to conduct logistic assessment is we need to sit down and determine. And if, you know, we need to sit down and determine what we want to learn from, you know, such an assessment. This assessment we want to conduct now, what do we want to learn from it? We have to sit down and decide. And then when we have decided what we want to learn from the assessment, that is the first step in planning for an assessment then you, you need to identify your indicators. What are these indicators? These indicators are those things that we look out for, we're going to look out for when we get to the facility that we want to assess. The key things we want to look out for, when we get to the facility we want to assess, we need to sit down and decide 
what this indicators will be. We need to design an assessment. We need to design our assessment and also develop methodology to collect data. We need to know when we get to the field, how are we going to collect data? So you need to sit down and decide it before you commence your assessment. And also confirm resources for the assessment because going you know, to a facility to assess the performance of the facility involves moving from one place to the other and also moving your team, the people that are going to work with you from one place. So it involves resources. So you need to sit down and know the resources that you, you have. You also design and adapt an assessment tool with indicators. You have to decide the tool you want to use and adapt this tool with your indicators. You also train data collection, data collectors on the use of the tools, the tools that you have decided to use. You have to also train people how to use the tool to collect data in the field. And you also determine the size of your team. Very, very key. You need to determine the size of your team and determine the length of time for the assessment. You need to determine the length of time for the assessment. When you have decided that, you have, then the, you need to pilot test, pilot test your method and your tools. You need to pilot test your method and your tool and then schedule a site visit. When you schedule the site visit, then the next thing is to, you know, carry out the visit with your team, conduct interview, interview key informants in the facility that you are assessing, look out for those indicators that you have decided, and then collect your data and your information, and then analyze data, calculate indicators, draft a report of your findings. Not just drafting a report alone, you need to also include recommendations. So you draft your report at the end of the day, and then write your recommendation. Finalize your report and disseminate. Send your report to appropriate quarters and then prepare an implementation plan. You prepare an implementation plan. Now, we talked about, I know, one of the, uh, the things you need to do when you are going for an assessment is to decide, identify the indicators that you want to use to assess your logistics there, system performance. Now, these indicators are one, average duration of stockouts, frequency of stockouts, percentage of stock expired or damaged, percentage of facilities holding stock within maximum um, stroke minimum level. You know, the, it, when, you have, when a facility is constantly having expired or damaged product, now some, that is a red flag. That is a, a particular facility need, has a, uh, amount of commodity they can keep within a, spe a specific period of time. That is the minimum level and also maximum level. So when a particular facility is constantly expressing stockouts, you go to a facility, a health facility to run a laboratory test and you're told there's no rating. They keep having frequent stockouts. That means somebody somewhere is not doing what he or she is supposed to do. That is an indicator. Another indicator is percentage of facilities that are not reporting, uh, and also percentage of facilities that are not reporting on time. So not just reporting, but when you are reporting and you are not reporting on time, is also an indicator. Frequency of emergency orders. Yes, in, you, you can order, have an emergency order, but when emergency order becomes too frequent, that means somebody somewhere is not doing his or her work. Emergency order can come due to sudden outbreak of diseases, natural disaster, and all that. So you can have an increased inflow of patients into the hospital. But you can order an emergency you know, commodities to help you sustain what you, you have. But when this emergency order becomes too frequent, then somebody somewhere is not doing what it's supposed to do. Then percentage of physical inventory counts that match record is also an indicator. Lead of length of lead time versus expected lead time. Percentage of storage facilities in compliance with storage guidelines. Accuracy of forecast, existence of an adequate multi-year procurement plan, and stakeholders' commitment to procurement plan. To procurement plan, all these are indicators that you can use to assess logistic system performance. Now, 
We talked about when you have identified your indicators, then you have to get your tools and adapt your team to your tools. We have about five tools here that you can use to assess logistic system performance, both in the health system and also in also laboratory services, medical laboratory services, part of the health system. Number one, we have here logistic system assessment tool, logistic indicator assessment tool, LIAT, assessment tool for laboratory services, ISO accreditation assessment tool, Slater checklist for who Afro SLMTA. For the purpose of this section, we are going to be focusing on first three, the logistic system assessment tool, LSAT, logistic indicators assessment tool, LIAT, assessment tool for laboratory services, ACLAS. For the fourth and the fifth one, the ISO accreditation assessment tool, I would love you to research more on them and find out how you can use those two tools to assess logistic system performance and when to when and where to apply them. The ISO accreditation assessment tool and the slipper checklist for who Afro SLMTA. Find out when to use them and how to use them in assessment of logistic system. For the first three logistic system assessment tool. Logistic Indicator Assessment Tool and Assessment Tool for Laboratory Services. In the soft copy has been uploaded in your group. You need to download them and study them properly. Find out if you can, you know, if you'll be able to know what is, find out the purpose of each of the two and at what level of logistic and laboratory system does each of the two apply. What kind of data does each tool collect? What are the necessary steps to implement each of these tools? And what are the benefits of using these tools? Look at those tools very well. The soft copy of these three tools have been uploaded. Look at them critically and see if you can answer these questions for yourself. Logistic system assessment tool. Each element can be scored based on a subset of questions using LSAT logistic system assessment tool. Each element can be scored based on a subset of questions, which can be added up into a composite score per section. Logistic system assessment tool can be used to evaluate a specific level in the logistic system. It can be applied at any level of logistic system, but its primary application is to evaluate the national logistic system in order to set priorities agree upon a common strategy and design, design an intervention to address the priorities and strategy identified. Logistic system assessment tool can be applied. Its primary application is to evaluate the national logistic system, even though it can be used at any level of the logistic system. It is a qualitative diagnostic monitoring tool, which uses a focus group methodology to carry out a comprehensive assessment of the process involved in logistics system management, and plus some outcome measures. It is a qualitative diagnostic and monitoring tool, which uses a focus group methodology to carry out a comprehensive assessment of the processes involved in logistic management. Remember, we are discussing logistic system assessment tool. It is a qualitative diagnostic and monitoring tool. Logistic system assessment tool can provide a comprehensive view of all aspects of logistics, be used as a diagnostic tool in, to identify logistics and commodity security issues and opportunities. It can also be used as a questionnaire type guide for conducting key informant interviews at all levels of the system. Le it, can, it can be used to raise collective awareness and ownership for system performance and goals for improvement. It can also be used by country personnel as a monitoring tool and also provide input for work planning. When you have must have finished collecting information using your logistics system assessment tool, the next thing is to analyze the information and also gather your information together. And then this can be used in making informed decisions that affect the system positively. 
And when you, so when you finish collection of data, you need to develop a consolidated summary of the data that you have collected, the information you have collected. Remember the essence of performing logistics system assessment is to improve the system, to identify the strengths of the system and the weaknesses and find ways to eliminate the weaknesses and to make the system perform better. So develop a consolidated summary of what you have seen during your assessment, the strengths and the weaknesses, compare findings of the current assessment. If you have done the assessment previously, compare findings of the current assessment to what you have done previously. Note significant changes, identify key conditions and circumstances that will influence the choice of objectives and interventions. Identify your objectives and reevaluate objectives from your last year. Select interventions based on priority. Select intervention based on priority, feasibility, and availability of resources versus requirement. Now, in summary, logistic system assessment tool is useful for identifying key strengths and weaknesses. And also it can be used to identify constraints of the logistic system and for providing an overall picture of the commodity security. In summary, it is useful for identifying key strengths and weaknesses and also constraints of the logistic system and for providing an overall picture of this commodity security. Then we are now going to look at logistic indicator assessment tool. The second tool that can be used to assess logistic system performance. Logistic indicator assessment to LIAT. This uh, tool uses the following indicators. Accuracy of logistic data for interventory management. Remember, when you go for assessment, there are things to watch out for, which are the indicators. So the indicator you can watch out for when using logistic indicator assessment to LIAT to assess logistic system are Percentage of facility that receive the quantity of product orders. Percentage of facility that maintain acceptable storage condition. Percentage of facility whose stock level ensure near-term product availability. And percentage of facility that experience a stock out at any given time or at any given, at, at that particular time of visit. Now, logistic indicator assessment to LIAT can be applied at facility level. Unlike the other one that can be used at national level, this one is specific, uh, specifically applied at the facility level. When you have finished collecting data using logistic indicator assessment tool, you do your data analysis. You do your data analysis, and data analysis collected with a uh, LIAT generally follows the associated LIAT indicators monetary and evaluation indicators for assessing logistic system performance. And data analysis may take time depending on the software available. So you can use SPSS and other software in analyzing your data. The next tool that we're going to look at is assessment tool for laboratory services. And this tool is a diagnostic and monitoring tool that can be used for a baseline survey and for completing subsequent assessment for measuring changes in the medical laboratory logistics system. It is an also an integral part of the work planning process. At last, assessment tool for laboratory services is specifically meant for uh, assessing medical laboratory logistics uh, performance. At last, can be used to determine tiered level of laboratory network in the country, types of laboratory services provided at each tiered level of the network, instrument performance and downtime, as well as maintenance performance, availability of regions at any level of the network for continuous services, national policy on standardization and harmonization of test offerings. Atlas can also provide strategic level information on you know, compliance to clinical standard operating procedures, you know, the facilities that are actually complying to clinical standard operating procedures, human resource capacity at each level of laboratory network, data to inform the development of national laboratory strategic plan at the country level. And also it can also help to develop 
and also development of harmonized instrument list and standard test uh, profile. Atlas, the information collected using Atlas is analyzed to identify challenges and opportunities in the medical laboratory logistics system. And also, it's also helped to outline next steps and recommend, and recommend ways to make the system work better. Atlas is a tool. As it also has the additional advantage of assessing diagnostic services at each level of medical laboratory network. You can apply it at any level of medical laboratory tiered network. And it can also be used to assess how individual laboratory is performing in order to implement appropriate strategy. It helps you to assess how individual laboratory is performing. When you have finished collecting your data, the next thing is to analyze your data, irrespective of the method you use in collecting your information for the assessment of logistic system. The next thing is to analyze your data and make something out of your data. Remember, it is garbage in, garbage out. So quality data will, is equal to accurate evaluation of what is actually occurring in the system. Gathering of quality data will help you to know what is really happening in the system and how to improve the system. And then at the end of the day, remember you are going to make a recommendation. You're going to write a report and also make a yeah, recommendation and form an implementation plan. So if the information you gathered well, during the assessment is not trustworthy, then your recommendation may not so also not be worth it. So quality data will help you to do your work very well and also make informed decision at the end of the day. Now, what is your role as a laboratory logistic manager? As a laboratory logistic manager, you are, as a medical laboratory logistic manager, your duty is to plan for the assessment. It's your duty to plan for the assessment, identify the type of assessment needed. You need to identify the type of assessment needed. As for in this case, it says supply chain of laboratory services. You need to, it is your duty as a medical laboratory logistic manager to identify tools to be used for the assessment. Tools to be used for the assessment. It is your duty to train data collectors on the tool, clean up data before analysis. It is your duty as medical laboratory logistic manager to analyze the data and also interpret your data. When you have finished doing this, it is also your duty to identify strengths and weaknesses of logistic system. So you are going to conduct the assessment with your team, you are the head of the team. And when you have finished gathering your data, it is your duty to identify the strengths and weaknesses of the logistic system you have assessed. Prepare a report of your findings. You prepare a report of your findings. Disseminate the findings to stakeholders with recommendation, not just sending your findings, but your findings must go with recommendations. This recommendation must include how to make the system stronger how to eliminate weaknesses and how to improve the system. And also you must develop an implementation plan slash strategy. You must develop implementation plan and strategy. Now this implementation plan that you are going to develop must have these characteristics. One, it must be consistent with the program's policies and procedures. The implementation plan that you're going to develop must be consistent with the program policies and procedures. And it must focus, you know, must be, it must focus on objectives and interventions with greatest needs. Objectives and interventions with greatest needs and also greatest likelihood of success. And of course, you must consider the availability of resources. So the AI implementation plan must be consistent with program policies and procedures, must focus on objectives and interventions with greatest need, and then greatest likelihood of success, and again, available resources. We need to also consider the availability of resources. <clears throat> then another characteristic of your implementation strategy is one, you must focus on priority areas. You must focus on priority areas, areas that are more feasible. And also you must include key assumptions underlying each intervention. 
you must include key assumptions underlying each intervention and also include indicators for measuring progress towards completing the interventions. You must include key indicators for measuring progress towards completing the interventions. We have come to the end of today's uh, lecture. I enjoyed it and I hope that you did. I will be glad to receive questions from you. If you have any question, feel free to put it on the comment section. I will be glad to get back to you and answer your questions. We want to acknowledge you know, the help of you said, the support of United States government through supply chain management system for the curriculum development in all the medical laboratories, uh, all the universities that offer medical laboratory science. And want to say thank you to them all. And thank you for listening. We hope to see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>